My name is Jenna. I'm with Parker Learning Gardens and we're going to talk about some worms today. I want to start out with a little bit of worm biology and I will be using our worm bin composting system um, over here as a demonstration. Um, so we'll start off with uh, talking a little bit about worms specifically. Uh, the most effective worm for vermicomposting, which is composting with worms, is the red wiggler. Um, it's also known as a manure worm, red worm, or tiger worm. Uh, red wigglers are specialized surface dwellers. They live in the upper layers of organic matter in decaying litter piles um, or in your compost or your worm bin. Uh, they do not develop burrows and aren't found deep in the subsoil like the garden earthworms are. Um, red wigglers tolerate a temperature range of about 40 to 90 degrees. Um, uh, over 90 degrees they're going to either perish if they cannot escape or they're going to look for refuge elsewhere that is cooler temperatures. Um, peak composting and reproduction for the worms happens between 71 and 89 degrees. Um, red wiggler worms are about 75 to 90 percent water weight so uh, they do need a very good amount of moisture um, to keep them healthy. Also, they breathe through their skin and they need to be moist to breathe. Um, you may have noticed when it rains, all the worms come up and they're in the uh, surface and they're in your puddles and they're cruising around on the top of the road and sidewalks and everything. Um, it's actually really interesting. So they can actually get to where they're going faster and they are still able to breathe when it's moist out, when there's puddles, when there's water on the surface of the ground. Um, a lot of people think they're coming out of the soil because they're drowning, and they're actually coming out because they can get to where they're going faster, just like us. If we were burrowing through the ground, it would take a lot longer to get to where we're going, as opposed to being on the surface and having nothing in our way to get to where we're going. So they can spread their genetics further and move to other areas to meet other worms and reproduce um, by, by using the surface of the ground when it's really moist out. So they're not actually drowning because uh, worms can live in water for up to three weeks. Uh, so because they do breathe through their skin and they need to be wet to breathe. Um, so they're not drowning contrary to uh, common belief but um, they end up going to other places and they end up needing to stay nice and wet uh, to get there, which is one reason that you need to keep your worm compost uh, very moist. Um, we water our worm composter, which is a pretty big composter, um, up to probably two to three times a week in the summer. Uh, if it's raining, we water it a little less. We do have a cover uh, to keep the sunlight out of there, so we do need to water under that. Um, but we have a designated um, spray nozzle for our composter, and we also have this rubber mat that helps keep the moisture in, it keeps the sunlight out, because uh, worms don't have eyes, but they are very photosensitive to, their skin is very sensitive to the sun. Um, so they can tell when they're in the sunlight and they go underground. Um, so we have what we've just found that works really well and you can find all kinds of different things to use for it is this rubber mat that's for the back of a pickup truck. Um, you put it in your canopy um, and it's really heavy which is nice. The worms like it when it's real heavy on the soil. They like to press up against it as long as it's not too warm and um, it also helps keep the moisture in and it keeps the sunlight out. Um, so we use this, you can also use rubber stall mats, um, anything that's heavy and uh, isn't gonna let the light through um, will be great. And obviously finding things to repurpose for this use is beneficial. Um, so yeah, we have the, we have the, um, fact that they need to be moist and that they are sensitive to light 
Um, they also can eat up to uh, its own body weight in food every day. Um, worms don't actually eat raw food scraps. They eat um, bacteria mostly. So they uh, will ingest the bacteria and in each segment of the worm, they have a pair of kidneys and um, basically uh, also they have, it's kind of more like a bird or a chicken. They have a crop and a gizzard. So the little bacteria go in there, which are little single cell organisms and um, the worms kind of like pop them in their little gizzards and digest them and then they'll secrete uh, their waste is secreted through their skin that's also why worms are a little slimy um, they kind of secrete that liquid through their skin um, they don't have a you know teeth to grind things and they don't have um, a rectum area they just secrete it out of their bodies so uh, they um, where am I <laughs> as uh, the food moves through their crop and gizzards it mixes with grit and is macerated by the musculature in the organs um, so it's really interesting you will if you look at red wigglers um, it's really cool because they're characterized by their internal and external segmentation or rings. Um, so they also uh, will reproduce every 30 to 45 days. And this is probably my favorite thing about worms is uh, that they are, uh, they are hermaphroditic, which means that they are going, they each have both sexes but uh, they must mate with another worm to reproduce. My favorite thing is that when they create uh, this uh, cocoon, or what I call an egg, but it's a little cocoon, um, it's about the size of a grain of rice. And I will show what that looks like here in a minute. Um, but uh, it, it's like a little yellow grain of rice. It's very small. Um, one of those cocoons can contain up to 10 baby worms in it and what's amazing is that they can tell if there's going to if there's enough food or there is the right temperature if there is enough room for them in their environment to be successful and be healthy um, they aren't going to hatch out of that cocoon until the conditions are just right so when we talk when I mentioned that uh, the ideal temperature for reproduction um, was uh, 71 to 89 degrees um, that is the ideal temperature in which the eggs will hatch um, and also the ideal temperature for worms to mate and like be happy um, another uh, cool fact is that when you have things like avocado shells or uh, citrus rinds or squash uh, that are more like a gourd that have the harder casings um, and they make these like little swimming pools in your compost. Worms love that. It's like a little party for them and they really like to go in there and they're all mating and eating and soaking up the water together. Um, so having a few areas where there's little pockets of swimming pools for the worms, uh, they will really enjoy that. Um, you know, I talk about how worms like to party but uh, if you are creating an environment like uh, a whole bunch of apples in a bucket that's left in the heat, you got to be really careful not to create uh, a bunch of alcohol. If you uh, create a bunch of alcohol, that can kill your worms if you add that to your compost. So you're trying to promote bacteria, which you can do aerobic or anaerobic bacteria. Um, worms will eat any kind of bacteria. but uh, they, if you're producing alcohol, that's not going to be beneficial for the worms. So, um, making sure that it's not bubbling, like if you were to shake the mixture and you were questioning whether it might have created some alcohol, if it's not fizzing and bubbling, um, also smelling it, and if it smells like any alcohol fumes coming off of it, it's probably not ideal for your worm bin. Um, you might lay it out. Uh, pour it out and kind of let the the more solid content dry out a little bit before you add it to your uh, pre-compost. 
so now I talk about pre-compost and back here behind me I have a, we have our pre-composting system. Here at PLG we have many uh, pre-composting systems and for more information on composting and creating a, a pre-compost uh, such as ours back here you can check out our other videos. Uh, we have one on composting that will break down and demonstrate how to make that. Um, but what we do is we pre-compost because when adding uh, regular just um, fresh food scraps from your kitchen or fresh lawn trimmings to your worm bin, uh, what happens is that compost actually heats up a lot and so it will end up getting too hot. We don't want it to get over 90 degrees and compost can get very hot. So if you have fresh, uh, you have a little worm bin on your back porch and you're putting only fresh food scraps in it, uh, for one, you're creating potentially too hot of an environment and that could kill all of your worms. For two, they don't have anywhere to get to, to get away from that when you have a smaller bin. So it's really recommended to have a li as large of a bin as you can. Um, this is a ideal size of a bin. It is very large. Uh, it's probably about eight feet by four feet. Um, and eventually we could fill it pretty deep it's about i don't know two and a half feet deep but right now the compost in there is only about eight inches or ten inches deep um so you know the size does matter they have those really small uh you know you can make a tote worm bin you can make all kinds of smaller worm bins that they sell at the nurseries and um, garden stores uh, but you do want to be really careful to kind of pre-compost that material. Um, and when you're pre-composting, you want to add a lot of carbon, a lot of uh, material that's going to make it fluffy. Uh, worms don't want solid, uh, compacted material. They want fluffy material that they can easily move through um, and that has the ability to retain a lot of moisture. So we use, in our pre-composting, we use sawdust and we also use straw to retain that moisture and make sure that we're providing enough um, carbon to the pre-compost to keep it fluffy and nice. Um, so I think I'm going to uh, demonstrate um, what a couple of those things look like over here. Um, so this is our worm bin and uh, We've got the rubber mat that we were talking about. And when I get in here, I just flip it up like that. You'll notice that there were some, maybe there, you, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but there were some, what I call black crickets. I haven't looked up their specific name, but they are black and they are crickets. Uh, there's also some potato bugs or sow bugs in here. Um, also very crucial to the, um, I lost that one are also very crucial to the soil food web. Um, see that guy right there? Little roly-poly, sow bug, potato bug, all kinds of names for those. These guys eat uh, plant matter and they break it down and help to make it more available for the worms. Um, they're actually a crustacean, which is really interesting. Uh, they have gills, so they also need moisture um, to breathe. So keeping your compost pretty moist, you can see as I dig in here that it's got a lot of moisture, but also if you notice, it's very fluffy. Uh, there might be some bigger chunks. <laughs> There's a rock in there, which we don't really need, but um, you'll see that the avocado halves are in here. And these do eventually break down and you can come in and crush them up if you've got an abundance. We just happen to get an abundance of them donated uh, to us um, from a local restaurant. But if you dig down in here a little ways, you'll see, start seeing some worms right there on top. You can see there's a large worm. You can see that there's a little baby worm right here. And right there is a worm egg right in front of my fingernail and I will pull these guys out and show you a little bit more specifically so you've got uh, then the adult worm 
You got probably an adult worm and a medium aged, mid aged worm. This one is pretty young, but it's not the smallest I've seen. I have seen a little bit smaller worms for sure. They're kind of sleepy right now. It's not very sunny out, so they're not, a lot of times when you pull the worms out, they'll wiggle, 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 wiggle. But it's not very bright out today, so they're not too concerned about the sunlight. Um, and then I'll get some worm eggs. So, uh, maybe I can find a couple more here. We do have an abundance of them. I just, spotting them can sometimes be difficult. Oh, look at how small that worm is. Try to pull this dirt off of them. You can see how small that worm is. Still not the smallest. Pretty cute though. And that's a little worm cocoon. What I tend to call worm eggs, but worm cocoon. And uh, yeah, so those worms are not going to hatch out of that cocoon. Ten worms will fit in there. They will not hatch out of that unless the conditions are just right. I do see a lot of baby worms in our compost um, regularly so it seems like the conditions are ideal for them hatching. Here's another worm egg. That's probably a bigger one and I hear that the darker yellow and more brown they get the closer they are to being ready to hatch. So that one's probably really close really interesting. Um, one thing about having avocados in your compost and getting things donated, produce donated, or picking it up from your local supermarket is that you're going to end up with a lot of these stickers, which you can either pick off beforehand or it's pretty easy to come back through once they've detached themselves and kind of just do a quick skim. Uh, I can pretty quickly remove them later on, which is nice. So, um, not ideal to have the stickers in there. They don't really break down very quickly. Um, so it's better to remove them if you can. So that's about worm composting. And uh, hopefully uh, we've answered some of your questions. If you're interested in more information, you can visit our website at parkerlearninggardens.org. Um, and we've got our classes listed on there. We've got a class uh, called Microbe Island, and it's our composting class where we dive into these uh, subjects deeper and we talk about the entire composting system, a lot of different options that you have. Um, so you can register for our class if you live in the local Eugene area um, or anywhere near Eugene. Um, you can register there and you can attend to in person here at the farm to get more information. Um, otherwise, you can keep watching out for our videos on YouTube and click the follow button, which is somewhere near here. And uh, we will keep putting out some fun videos for you.